we now first do some kind of interlude. We want to look at half space intersections. If you remember, the convex hull is the intersection of all those half spaces that contain all the points. Let's first go back to the two dimensional case, it's a bit easier. There, the convex hull is the intersection of all half planes that contain all the points. We now want to define a type of duality between points and non-vertical lines. How do we define this? So let's say we have a point P that has x coordinate PX and y coordinate PY. And this is our primal, we have our point here. For all these points, we want to define a line, which would be our dual. So we want to define a dual line for this point where the slope is PX and the intersection with the y-axis is at minus py. So in the dual we have px is about one half and py is one, so we have a line with slope one half that intersects the y-axis at minus one here. So this is the dual line for this point. This way we can map every point uniquely to a line in the dual. This is not a bijection because we cannot get the vertical lines. But for every non-vertical line, there is a point in the primal that gives us this line in the dual. And then, usually when you have a primal and a dual, you want to go both directions. I want to be able to go from the primal to the dual. I can go from the dual line to a primal point by doing this backwards. But I also can figure out if I have a point in the dual. What does that give me in the primal? So let's say we have any line in the primal and the slope of this line is m and the intersection with the y-axis is at b. For example this one here, we have b equals 2 and the slope is minus 2. And this also gives me a point here by doing exactly the same like this but backwards. So we want to define a point in the dual which is the point where the dual of the point is our line. That sounds complicated. So here it will be the point where it has x coordinate m and y coordinate minus b. So this point here. And what I mean with this is if you assume that this is a primal point, then the dual line you would get from this is that. So we have this duality of both types here. If I have a point here, then that gives me a line here. If I have a point here, then that gives me a line here. So the primal is the dual of the dual. This is a bit weird, yes. And we will soon see what this helps us. In the next part we will see a very nice application why this is helpful. So first we want to have some observations. And those are as follows. If we have any point on the plane, and we have any line that's non-vertical, like here, we have a point P and a line L. What does that mean in the dual? If P lies on L, then in the dual, L star will also lie on P star. So it is incidence preserving. And in particular, that also means if I have another line here, for example, this one G, what is this in the dual? Where does this lie? Uh, this line also goes through P. So this also has to be a point on the line P star. So whenever two lines intersect, that means that they are two points, they are of course collinear, and the line through them is exactly the dual line of the intersection. And even stronger, it doesn't only preserve the incidence, but it also preserves the order. So if I have a point that lies above some line, then in the dual, the dual point also lies above the dual line. So I have a line H here, P lies above it. And if we look at it at the dual, now this corresponds to a point that lies above P star. Okay, so this is nice that we can define something like this, that this exists. But what does this help us? So let's have a look at a point set in the primal. In the dual, that is a set of lines. Now what do we want to do in this lecture? We want to find a convex hull. So let's first look at the upper convex hull of this point set. That's defined by these four points and these three edges. 
These four points are four lines in the dual. What are these edges? Every edge is an intersection between two of these lines. So this edge here is the intersection between this and this line. This edge here is between this and this line. So we get exactly these three points. And now the interesting part is, if I take all these lines up to the intersection point and then follow the next line up to the intersection point and so on. That should uh, sound familiar to you from one exercise. This gives us the lower envelope of all these lines. So if I just move along the sequence of line segments and two unbounded line segments, then everything else lies above it. And symmetrically, if we look at the lower convex hull here, that again gives us four points, so four lines here, plus two that we didn't have, and three segments that correspond to intersection points here. So this gives us the upper envelope of the lines. So we have a direct correspondence here. And now if I look at the set of all points in the convex hull, what does that give me here? Every point here corresponds to a line in the dual. If you look, for example, at this point here, this point is this line in the dual. This point here is this line in the dual. For those two lines, we have the property that they lie completely below the lower and the upper envelope. And the same holds for all the other points inside this blue region. So if I take the union of those points and look at the union of those lines in the dual, then I get exactly the area between the upper and the lower envelope. So the upper convex hull of my points gives me the lower envelope of lines, the lower gives me the upper envelope of lines, and the other way around. If I have the lines, then from those lines I can also construct the convex hull. And we can compute the intersection of the lower and upper half planes via upper and lower convex hull. So computing the convex hull of a set of points in the plane is exactly the same as computing the upper and the lower envelope of a set of lines in the plane. And in 3D, computing the upper and the lower convex hull of a three-dimensional point set is exactly the same as computing the upper or the lower envelope of three-dimensional lines. The only thing we have to change in the duality for three dimensions is we have another coordinate here, but we also have another dimension for the line. And that third coordinate just gives us the dimension for the third line, and then we have a three-dimensional line. So we have these correspondences. But that also gives us something else that we will see in the next part. There's also a correspondence between the 3D convex cell and something that we've learned in the last few lectures, and that I want to show you now.